about the standard of refereeing uh, in those past weekend matches. Sure. You'd remember that a couple of penalties weren't given, red cards were given or not given. So, so much happened over the weekend and, you know, it's just... It's it's good for us to you know bring in some bring in someone who is knowledgeable. Who's in the know, and especially it, it bothers people when it happens. You know, at, a, at such a platform of you know of of of, of like a b- international platform, if I have to put it that way, um, it, 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 it's quite bothering. It's not something that happens locally, so people will complain naturally. Yes, and you know that. Uh Obviously, uh, our local referees as well are taking notes from uh, mm. those internationally based referees, and it's it really does. You know, these these are these referees are intertwined in a way, and we we need to get to the bottom of this. Why uh, are people so appalled in what's been happening in the Premier League? Well. Like I said before, complaints regarding uh, the standard of the past weekend's Premier League's uh, of matches uh, of refereeing have been flooding in. But the problem dates back longer than that, than just, you know, the past week. Well, on the line uh, to talk to us regarding the standard and status of a Premier League refereeing. We are going to bring in someone. We're still having him on the line. And Psychologist. I, he, he has so many he had, titles. He had to dig deeper. Okay. Yes. What is he? Psychologist, mm. FIFA referee, and assistant referee coach and mentor, among other achievements. Th- m- among uh, other achievements, he has so many. Mm. To me, I can't even mm. mention. He's also a writer. Um, you can go on, you know, your super sport to check out some of the the material that he's written so far. A very seasoned man in terms of refereeing. Quite, quite, quite a great person. I mean, a, a relevant person to get. I'm most interestedly, you know, interested to know what exactly is the problem with the standard of match um, officiating right now. Something that we'll have to f- figure out once we get a hold of him. I believe that he's out of the country. Maybe that's why, you know, it's kind of uh, delaying uh, for us to get a hold of him. Is he... Is he someone that's based in the country? No, I don't he's think not he would based, be based in the country. In the yeah. country. He's yeah. based in Europe. And he's also known as the hanging judge to me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Errol Sweeney. And we, we are st- currently still trying to get him back, to get him on the line uh, for now. No, I'm here now. Oh, oh, Dr. Errol Sweeney, how are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. How are you? We're thank good, you, thank you. you. Well, uh, there's been a lot of criticism towards the Premier League refereeing, uh, more especially this past weekend. What's your opinion on that or on the display? Look, I'm very slow to criticize referees um, in, in any country or in any league, having been there myself and knowing the difficulty of the job. Uh, and it's getting harder as um, time goes on. However, uh, when when a referee or a person, be it male or female, reaches a certain level, there are certain standards required from them. Um, if they get to a particular level, say Premier League level, well then they must be the cream of the cream. Mm. They must be the best of the best. And if they are the best of the best, then they should produce and deliver the best of the best. Uh, sadly, I have to say, and again, I'm very low to, to criticize, that did not appear to be the case this last weekend. And in my opinion, uh, the standard of refereeing in the Premier League in England is actually getting worse. Hmm. All right. Now, just being in literal sense, Doctor, I mean, what exactly is the problem with the standard of match, I mean, officiating right now? Also incorporating that, you know, with the previous experiences that have been happening in, uh, in the FIFA, uh, you know. I think the, um, the, the problem, particularly since we're speaking about the um, EPL, the problem there is that um, referees' salaries, this is my opinion again, referees' salaries are paid out of funds from the English FA, the Premier League, and the second tier of football called the Championship. Mm. Now, therein, I think, lies a problem. Maybe not may not be the main problem, but it is a problem. In that, and I would hope it's not the case, but perhaps psychologically the referees feel that because their money is coming from the leagues, they're feeling that pressure um, um, uh, that that's to give decisions against big teams and uh, sometimes controversial decisions against the teams that are, in effect, paying their salaries. Now, you cannot have that, and I hope it's not the case, but I'm, let's speculate that it is. You cannot have a situation where your salary is being paid by the people whom you are then going out to officiate uh, for. 
Now, I, I always use the analogy of the judicial system in any country. The judicial system in any country has to be uh, totally and absolutely independent from any branch or section of government who pay their salaries. They've got to be independent. You cannot have a situation where you see a judge before a trial begins coming down, shaking hands with the defense and shaking hands with the prosecution and then going back up on the bench. And that's what we're getting in soccer. We have referees shaking hands with players before the kickoff and then no longer has the game kicked off a minute, sometimes even less, and a referee gives a decision which one team or the other doesn't like. And suddenly they're in his face, they're shouting and screaming at him, they're crowding around him, they're trying to get him to change his mind. It's absolute nonsense. I have called for a long time now for an independent refereeing body, totally separate from any organization or what I call soccer politicians who are interfering in refereeing and referees. They should be totally separate, independent, controlled and run by referees, ex-referees, with a separate board, which was proposed to the PSL some years ago in a, in a report drawn up by former English referee David Ellery. And he proposed that there should be a board headed by a retired judge, perhaps, um, and, they, and they alone would control referees. Nobody else would have any say whatsoever. Now, Doctor, you recently wrote on the Professional Games Match Officials uh, Limited's decision to scrap referee assessors, or as we call them in South African football, match commissioners uh, from the Premier League match setup. What is the importance of assessors, and what will the effect of doing away with them due to the standard of football? Well, in my opinion, again, a match commissioner or a referee assessor or match ins a referee inspector or whatever you want to call them, these are the guys who go along and they look at the referees. Their only, their only function is to look at the referee's performance. How has he performed? How can his performance be improved? It's not to go there and to criticize him and to, uh, to uh, shout and scream at him and this and that. It's there to improve his performance in any way they can. Now, they've taken away referee assessors in the English Premier League. To me, that is a backward step. I believe that the match commissioner or referee assessor is like, uh, is like the, the coach is to the players, the referee assessor is to the referees. He, he is there to assess the referee. Based on his experience uh, of the past of being uh, uh, an ex-referee, he knows what the situation is. He can then help referees with their game, perhaps they're in the wrong position, perhaps they're, they're not running the correct way, perhaps there could be lots and lots and lots of things. And this is where the referee inspector or match commissioner comes in. I also believe, and it's not happening in South Africa, I don't know if it's happening in other countries, but it certainly was happening when I was refereeing. Match inspectors or match commissioners came into the dressing room before, during, and after the game to tell the referee, listen, I thought you were a little bit wide there, listen, I thought you missed the penalty there, and you missed it because you weren't close enough or you're too far away or whatever. And then that referee will not make that mistake in the second half. But now the match commissioners are not allowed into the dressing room. I don't know who is stopping them. Perhaps it's the referees, perhaps it's uh, SAFA, perhaps it's the PSL, I don't know. But to me, that again is a backward step. If you pick up, if you correct one mistake that you make in one game and say you get 35, 40 games a year by the end of the year you'll have corrected all 40 mistakes if you are making 40 mistakes you'll correct all 40 mistakes and by the end of the year you'll be absolutely brilliant but if you have what's happening now in the Premier League in England where, where a referee has a game on a Saturday and then perhaps he has another league match on a Tuesday or a Wednesday as I wrote in my blog then he will not know until after the this new committee sits on a Thursday to review videos of the game. And then they will look and say, oh, yeah, the referee was in the wrong position there. That's why he missed that handball. And then the referee doesn't know about it, perhaps for another week. Now, if he's going to, if he doesn't know for another week that he was in the wrong position, that's why he missed that particular handball or whatever it is, he could go out and make the same mistake in his game on a Tuesday. Whereas if he was told on the, on the Saturday, perhaps it was in the first half. If he was told at halftime, you missed that handball because you were in the wrong position, 
He's not going to repeat that error in the second half of that game, let alone his, his next game, perhaps on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. And this is why I believe match commissioners should be renamed. They should be called referee mentors or referee coaches, whose job it is is to help referees uh, progress and, and help them uh, to avoid making any mistakes. All right. Now, Doctor, earlier on you did mention, I mean, touched on uh, the issue of, you know, having an independent body obviously run by, by referees. And I felt like, you know, you just left it lying there. I mean, just looking deeper into it, why is it that we currently don't have an organization of that sort? And, I mean, is it something that's doable? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, like I said, David Ellery wrote that report, um, oh, going back maybe... Mm. or I'm, I'm just guessing off my head, maybe five, six years ago, uh, when the PSL were considering introducing full-time professional referees. They brought him out from England and asked him to do a study, which he did, and it was presented, and why it wasn't implemented, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I do think there is a need for it. Mm. Like I said, the referees should be like the judiciary, totally separate, independent, but accountable. I mean, they just can't, you know, become dictators and, and do what they like and not be held accountable. Absolutely, they have to be held accountable. Um, but, you know, I, I think professionalism, by the way, is not necessarily the correct way to go either. I mean, there's no point in having um, um, a, a list of, of referees as professionals and, and perhaps they're not good enough to be called professionals. The whole thing, I believe, instead of being a professional, how about having a professional attitude? And I remember uh, giving an interview way back in 1992, when all this was first muted, when I was still refereeing in the Premier League in the PSL, and the question came up about professional referees, and I said, not necessarily professionals, but more like a professional attitude. And to do that, you need to get a, a group of guys together, hand-picked, Specially selected by an experienced ex-referee who will say, this guy, this guy, this guy, not him, he's not good enough yet, not him, he's too young, not this guy, but we take this one, this one, and you, you select and you nominate or get together a group of referees and put them through an intensive training program. And I guarantee you it will work if you get the right guys and then, obviously, pay them, compensate them for the work that they're going to do for the uh, time that they have to put in, if it's professionalism in the sense that they don't have any other job, then so be it. But uh, first of all, they have to want to be referees. Secondly, they must have a professional attitude that they are going to behave themselves in every way. That includes their diets, their drinking, their sleep, their whole social um, um, behavior must change as well. And then... If you have the right guys, then you pay them, correct? Uh, pay them a good, decent salary that they will be proud of their profession and that they don't have to worry where their money is going to come to. All they've got to worry is, is about 90 minutes of football. Uh, doctor, now looking forward, say in the next five, six years, do you see the standard of football improving from how it is now? Or, or, or refereeing, uh, pardon me, improving for, from now? given what's um, happening now? Well, the game is getting faster all the time. The players are much fitter, they have a lot more energy, they're faster, and refereeing has to be at least kept abreast of that, um, that level of fitness. Now, if it's not, referees are going to lag behind, they're going to get caught out of position, they're going to miss, hand, miss handballs, they're going to miss penalty kicks, they're going to miss incidents which should come under their control. They have to be able to keep up with the game, and that's why I'm saying the referees should be handpicked, um, not necessarily for their fitness. I mean, you can have a, you can have Usain Bolt, but he might not know how to blow a whistle. They've got to be all wrapped into one. They've got to be fit. They've got to be fair. They've got to understand the laws of the game. They've got to have a full knowledge of the interpretations of the laws. So you have the 17 laws, but there's also back of the book. They must be completely, absolutely, 100%. Um, up to speed on the laws of the game and the interpretation of the laws of the game. That's not going to happen unless 
there is more money, more time, more resources put into referees and refereeing. Refereeing has always been the correlation of football. We are regularly told that a game cannot go ahead without a referee. Yet, we are probably the, the ones where the least amount of money is spent in terms of resources uh, and, and um, uh, training and coaching and mentoring, all of those things. A lot more money has to be spent. I do believe that a professional approach should be adopted. I do believe that the guys who are selected should be paid for the job that they're doing. I do believe that if that is done, you will get the right caliber of people. I'm not saying that the people there at the moment are not the correct caliber. Please don't misunderstand me. Mm. But I'm saying a lot more could be done to improve the standards. Regularly we're hearing referees being being uh, criticized, not only in, in South Africa, it's in England as well. You saw it last week. Referees being lambasted by everybody. Now, having said that, the people who are criticizing, they have the benefit of slow motion action replays with camera angles from several different uh, angles, behind the goals, overhead cameras, you know, close-ups, all of those things. And even then, they sometimes don't get it right. How can you expect a referee to get it right first time? And he only has one chance at it. And FIFA will not allow uh, action replays for referees. They, they, there was an incident during the World Cup in South Africa in 2010 when an incident happened and one of the players was pulling at the referee's arm and said, look, look up at the screen. You're wrong. Look, I think he was cautioning the wrong player. And he said, look mm -hmm. up at the screen. You're cautioning the wrong player. And the referee couldn't do that because FIFA don't Hello. All right. We have to, you know, let it, uh, you know. <laughs> Simmer for a while. Simmer thank you so much, while. Doctor, for your but time. Thank you very much, Doctor. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Happy whistling. You. Well, uh, that was Dr. Errol Sweeney, uh, quite, you know, a very informative. Seasoned um, man. A very seasoned man. I mean, he writes for the Soccer Referee USA. He blogs there, and he also blogs, uh, well, he, you might find his, his blogs on uh, Supersport as well. He's quite a renowned uh, referee. But otherwise, it's 10 minutes to 7. We'll talk UEFA just after this.